In this video, we're gonna take a look at catenary wires used to support cables above ground level. We can see here that it's fixed into the main building and the other end of the catenary wire goes all the way down to a garden shed and they've supported a cable on there to feed that garden shed. We can use Appendix D of the on-site guide in order to look at the rules behind using a catenary wire. And we've used this before when looking at fixings for steel wire armored and twin and CPC cables. We're gonna to need to use Appendix D Table D2 and I've blown it up to make it bigger you to see it on camera. So if I bring in my blown up version, I've also made some highlights on it. So the minimum length of span and minimum height above ground um, for overhead wire in between buildings. So we're gonna be talking about, first of all, for me, is that catenary wire, but there is some other ones that you'll see as you're, say, walking around your town or village that also have cables above ground. So the most obvious one would be bare overhead. So we used to see in pylons, and we used to see those cables supported on those pylons. There's no additional wire on those to hold the weight for the cables. It's actually the bare conductors that are spread between the poles. And then the other one that you might think of as we go through this presentation, let's get it out of the way to start with, would be for BT cables or phone cables that go from the wooden pole in your street and you see them spanning across the road or spanning between buildings. And all you can see is that black cable, which is the phone cable. Now you're thinking, well, there's no catenary wire there, Gary. So how are they being supported? Because they're actually there for hanging on the conductors at both ends, which is not good when you think there'll be wind, birds sitting on them, all the rest of it, and obviously stressing out those conductors. Those type of cables, as it suggests here with aerial cables, actually incorporate a catenary wire within them. So those phone cables that we see spread across roads actually have a catenary wire built into them. And that's something that I only found out a few years ago, and it makes logical sense now. But we're gonna be looking at a catenary wire. So in other words, probably a piece of steel that's strapped between two fixed points used to support the cables. And we saw at the very start of the video, this sort of arrangement here, where we had maybe this fixed to the building, okay, into position. And then we've got this here, which is our hook, which then our steel goes round here in order to support our cable. And the idea of this is, is that you can tension the steel. So you can wind this in and out because obviously that steel will be quite heavy and will sag and we don't want it to sag, we want it to possibly be as tight as we can so it keeps the height up between the two fixed points. So that's what that is at the very start of the video. If we look here then, so our cables are sheathed with thermoplastic PVC or having an oil resistant and flame retardant or HOFR, heat, oil and flame retardant sheath. That was easy for me to say, supported by a catenary wire. Let's think about cables supported on a catenary wire. This is the column here we're gonna need within number one. So column number one, this section here is where we talk about the catenary wire that I showed at the very start of the video. And then when we come across to column number uh, two, this is the maximum length that the span can be. So as we roll down to the one with the catenary, it says no limit. So you can have it as long as you want it to, which makes logical sense because we're not supporting any of the cables as a catenary. It's this steel that's fixed between the buildings that holds the weight of the cable. So it can be unlimited in length. Next one, we're going to look at the title of this here. It says minimum height of the span above ground at a road crossing. So this is the minimum height, so it must be at least this or greater. So when we come down and look at where there is a road crossing with a catenary wire, it says it must be a minimum of 5.8. You must take into consideration where this is. So if you were on a caravan park with very high loading lorries moving caravans around, you're gonna find this height increases. Remember, this is the minimum, okay, that it can be. So we can certainly have it higher than this. You can't go any lower than that. So that's 5.8 meters as a minimum or higher for that height where there is a road crossing. And then we've got the next one to it, in positions accessible to vehicles or traffic or other crossings, it's very similar wording. And of course, a very similar minimum height of 5.8. Now it gets interesting, and this is where maybe some of those multi-choice questions will come up because in the next one, which is column number five, there is a different number. So let's read what the title says here. In positions inaccessible to vehicles and traffic. So this is maybe where you can walk down a path and you get then for a walk underneath the catenary wire. And obviously that height is not gonna be anything gonna be an issue to a person because your height is governed by yourself. And I don't think many of us are gonna be strapping down the road at 3.5 meters. So where there is 
no vehicles present, we have a minimum height of 3.5. Again, that's the minimum. We can be considerably higher than that if we want to in order to support our cables. And when you think about supporting your cables onto that catenary wire, I think you also need to take into consideration UV degradation, in other words, sunlight. And is it right to use standard twin and CPC cables? If it's going to be in direct sunlight, possibly not. And if we think back to the cables that we see maybe for Sky TV on the outside of our building, or those phone cables that come in on those own individual catenaries built within them, they're usually black. They're usually designed to be outside and in sunlight. And that makes you think about the fixings onto that steel catenary wire as well. And I don't think it's a very good idea to use PVC cable ties. And you often see this, don't you, where you see a cable attached to a catenary wire and these over time have broken off. And then all of a sudden the cable starts to sag away from the catenary wire. So in other words, it isn't supporting it as it was first intended. So maybe that's an opportunity to use a metallic cable tie in those type of situations. If you want to see how we used Appendix D to work up the maximum clipping distance for PVC, PVC twin and CPC cables, check out the video over there.